uh, in the second layer is is only different from zero at times equal t to at the last time step. Okay. So now we have these simplifications, then we can simplify these backpropagation through time equations a little bit. And now I really try to uh, rewrite the uh, this uh, dh2, dh1 terms out explicitly, where I've used again that I should take the outer derivative with respect to the activation function, and then I should take the inner derivative uh, uh, where I take the derivative with respect to the argument of the activation function, and then I get this result. And I also introduced uh, uh, an extra notation with this a, which is like the presynaptic in a way uh, activation. Yes. Okay. So I'll print them again here on the next slide, so you can see. And uh, now we have written down the simplified uh, backpropagation through time equations. Let's now try to analyze these uh, for specific uh, settings of activation functions and weights. So here they are again, and now let's look at when this uh, recursion backwards in time between the derivative at time t minus t plus one and t at uh, derivative at time t, uh, when this recursion either uh, vanishes, I mean, are being lowered at each step, or can explode. So first, vanishing is probably the most uh, frequently occurring situation. And this can happen if the factor that we multiply in our recursion, it becomes uh, numerically very small. So this could happen, for example, so here I've written the expression. So this could happen, for example, if the weight over time is very small, very close to one, very close to zero numerically. Or it can happen if the derivative of the activation function becomes small. And let's take as an example the tangent hyperbolic. Tangent hyperbolic, if the input argument is very large, plus minus, then the derivative becomes very close to zero. Remember, we have this kind of S shape. So that means that if our activation at that at one time instant is very numerically very large, then it means that the gradients back in time are simply killed. And of course, many times we don't need, we don't have, often we don't have any need for information flowing back in time, but it could be that we have a task where we need a long information. And if we have initialized or we have happened to end in a situation where we have a, an absolute activation of one of the units that are very large, then we can never, we, we have a hard time recovering and get information sent uh, backwards in time. Exploding gradients can happen in the opposite situation that this factor we multiply with in the recursion becomes numerically larger than one. And if we take the rectify linear unit, then we can see that the, uh, the derivative is, is just one if the, argu uh, if the argument is larger than zero. Uh, so this means that if we have a positive argument uh, to the activation function and our weights forward in time is uh, is larger uh, numerically larger than one then we have a gradient that becomes larger and larger and of course if you think about if it's just one step then of course it's not a problem but if it's 10 steps then this uh, effect will be that we we take this weight to the 10th power and that means that we can have a very very large number so this can also happen, of course, in practice. And we solve that by, by gradient clipping. We'll come back to that in the next week when we talk about tricks of the trade. Yes, a partial solution of this thing about retaining gradients, not uh, avoiding uh, vanishing gradients, is, is specifically designed uh, units in recurrent neural networks called gated units. So. The most famous and original gated unit is this long short-term memory cell. It's a little bit complicated to explain all the details, but the main point is that you should think about this as like a, com 
like a, a memory block in a computer and this memory block can either be overwritten or it can retain its value to the next step or we uh, and when we need it we can write it out and and update our hidden state so the idea now is that we have these different gates so for example at the bottom we have a forget gate if this forget gate is set on then we will actually erase the content of the cell so the cell is like just a scalar valued uh, quantity uh, that we have defined at each time step and if we have if the forget gate is not set then we will uh, anything everything else not being used then we'll just retain the same value at the next time step and in this way we can we can kind of keep uh, remembering the signal and the same effect will happen when we do back propagation because then it's the same value we have at each time step then we have other uh, 